Hi, I'm Dr. Jason Milahani from Stanford University, where I'm a first-year fellow in rheumatology. Today, I'm sharing a case of a very interesting patient that highlights my interest in the overlap between pulmonary medicine and rheumatology. This patient was a 62-year-old woman who initially was referred to the pulmonary hypertension group and then later connected with our group when it appeared that she had a connective tissue disease as the explanation for her pulmonary hypertension. She was quickly found to have systemic sclerosis based on both physical exam findings, including skin thickening in the distal extremities, as well as uh, tightening of the skin around the mouth, and then also laboratory findings, including an anti-centromere antibody. She had very prominent Raynaud's, and then of course the pulmonary hypertension as well. What was rather unusual was that upon uh, evaluating her by CT scan when she presented to the hospital with shortness of breath, she had very prominent findings of pulmonary edema, including interlobular septal thickening, ground glass bilaterally, pleural effusions, as well as mediastinal lymphadenopathy. We did confirm with our uh, cardiac echo that she in fact did have pulmonary hypertension where she was found to have a dilated right atrium and right ventricle. And then on right heart cath, where she was found to have an elevated mean pulmonary artery pressure of 46 and a pulmonary wedge capillary pressure of six. The patient was, as typical, started on IV vasodilators to uh, treat her pulmonary arterial hypertension, but rather than improving, initially got worse, with signs of worsening pulmonary edema. That was an initial hint that something other than typical pulmonary arterial hypertension may have been going on. The pulmonary hypertension team suggested that this could be pulmonary veno-occlusive disease, a rare variant of group 1 pulmonary hypertension, which is commonly associated with systemic sclerosis. In that instance, in pulmonary veno-occlusive disease, patients much like this one tend to get worse because the, uh, uh, the obstructing lesion is distal to the capillaries in the small venules, so by dilating the arteries, you create a backflow at the venules into the capillaries, leading to more alveolar overfilling. Initial, uh, after that initial trial, the patient was able to be stabilized on a low to moderate dose of pulmonary vasodilators and was discharged from the hospital. She unfortunately had a very rocky course over the next few months and tragically passed away. Her family was uh, able to request an autopsy and then we were able to find the definitive diagnosis which in her case was pulmonary capillary hemangiomatosis with a minor contribution from pulmonary veno-occlusive disease. So in these uh, pictographs here, on the left I have uh, normal lung tissue highlighting the alveolar septa, which are relatively thin, with a sprinkling of capillaries embedded within, compared to her lung tissue where she had thickened alveolar septa and then a huge overabundance of capillaries, uh, characteristic of PCH. As I mentioned as well, a minor contribution of pulmonary veno-occlusive disease. In this case, a normal staining on the left showing a uh, typical venule of the lung, compared to hers on the right where the uh, venule highlighted has complete obliteration of the lumen. Both of these findings occur uh, together in many cases, and it's not exactly known why this happens and why it happens in systemic sclerosis, but there are a variety of other causes as well, including different chemotherapies, alkylating agents, in a very rare inherited form. Unfortunately, beyond uh, tissue biopsy, there's not an easy way to diagnose this. The CT scans, as well as the clinical scenario, hints at it, but isn't itself definitive. Um, and then to just explain a little bit to, as to why right heart cath doesn't identify this, when you wedge the catheter into the small arterioles uh, in order to create a static column of blood, what happens is the pressure is actually read after the obstructing lesion. So it reads as if the pulmonary capillary pressure is normal, uh, rather than correctly recognizing that the pulmonary capillary pressure is elevated. Thank you very much for listening.